morning. Welcome back for another devotion. And we've been talking about the Word of God and how that it is rich and true and how that it is a very important aspect of our lives. It should be very, very uh, important to us as far as living for God and walking with God and understanding the importance of the Word in our God, uh, the Word of God in our life. And uh, what we're going to talk today about, uh, we're going to talk about the Bible again. And someone asked the question one time, said, is the Bible complete? Well, there are 66 books in our Bible. Some people claim that there are 12 books which belong in the scriptures that are not included in our Bible. These 12 books are called the Apocrypha. Well, if you look at the candlestick in the tabernacle, it was composed of 66 parts. The holy, the holy oil running throughout. This is a good picture of the Word of God inspired throughout by the Holy Spirit. It is also significant that at no time did Jesus quote from any of these 12 extra books. In fact, Jesus and the Apostle Paul quoted more from the Old Testament than any other writer or person in the New Testament. So I want to take some time here today and go through these the books of the Bible, these 66 books. Note that in the Old Testament, it's composed of 30 nine books, and these uh, 39 books are broken down into five groups. The first group, group is the laws, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Next is history, and history includes Joshua, the leader after Moses, and goes through such things as Judges, Ruth, Samuel, first and second Samuel, and when the kingdom divided, it talks about first kings, second kings, about the split kingdom, and uh, second First and Second Chronicles, it talks about Ezra, Nehemiah, and Esther. And what a great book that is. Um, then you move from there, you move to what's considered the books of poetry. We talk about Job, and we talk about the book of Psalms, which many of those are written by David, and the book of Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and the Song of Solomon, which those last three many believe are written by Solomon. Then you have what's called major prophets. And when we say major prophets, it's not that they are more important than any of the other prophets of the Bible, of the Old Testament. It's just that they wrote longer books than the other uh, prophets, which we'll talk about in just a few seconds. You have in these major prophets, you have Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, written by Jeremiah. Then you have Ezekiel, and you also have the uh, book of Daniel. These five books make up the major prophets of the fourth uh, division of the Old Testament. And then you have the minor prophets. You have Hosea, you have Joel, which Hosea is one of the most beautiful love stories in the Bible. Uh, talk about God's love for his people. And then Joel chapter 2 is where we believe that uh, the Bible speaks about the day of Pentecost. In fact, the Apostle Peter quoted from Joel chapter 2 on the day of Pentecost under the guidance and direction of the Holy Ghost. Then you have Amos, Obadiah, you have Jonah, that great prophet to the city of Nineveh. Oh, Lord, raise up prophets like Jonah to preach today, and whole cities will be turned to you. Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, and Malachi. And those close out the Old Testament divisions as the minor prophets, not minor because they were less important, just in the length of their books. And then you have the New Testament. The New Testament is divided into 27 books. And you have the first one, which is the biography. And you have Matthew, you have Mark, you have Luke, and you have John, who, who are the biography of, they talk about the life of Jesus, they talk about the life of the disciples. And that's where we learn so much about Christ and his disciples throughout those four books and what they did and what they how they lived and how they followed Christ and how they uh, watched and saw the things that he did. And then you have the history in the New Testament, which is the book of Acts. It's where the beginning of the church in Acts chapter 1 and verse chapter 2, where the church was born on the day of Pentecost, when the Bible says, and the day of Pentecost was fully come. They were with one place and one accord, and then one time there come a sound from heaven, and it was a great mighty wind and filled all the house where they were sitting. And they all received the Spirit of God and were filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost 
And they all began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit of God gave them the utterance. And we believe that that historical event is still happening today. People are still receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost today. And then you get into the, uh, the epistles or the writings of the epistles. And, and you'll understand there's one man who wrote more of the, of the books of the epistles than any other writer. And that man happened, uh, if you want to find out how he came to God and his life, look in Acts chapter 9 and you'll see how he came to the Lord. And, but then you have Romans, a letter to the Roman church. And you have a church letters 1 and 2 to the Corinthians church. And then Paul would write to the Galatians. He would write to those in Ephesus. And uh, in, in Acts chapter 19 talks about Paul passing through the upper coast of Ephesus. And, and, and uh, he ran into some, he came in contact with some of John's disciples. And you'll see how that uh, he talked to them about how they received the Holy Ghost. And they had not. And had they been baptized, and they had not. So Paul laid his hands on them. They received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Many, many days after the uh, original outpouring of the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost, the Bible says they spoke in tongues and prophesied, and they were baptized in the name of Jesus. Then you have Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, and Paul wrote these, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, 1st and 2nd Timothy, Titus, and Philemon. Oh, what a beautiful story in the book of Philemon about a man who was a runaway slave. But when the Apostle Paul came in contact with him, the man became a Christian and we got saved and Paul sent him back to the place where he had come from, to a man named Onesimus. That you should check out. The book of Hebrews, an incredible scripture, chapter and chapter 11, the Hebrews, the chapter of faith and the hall of faith. Then you have uh, James, 1st and 2nd Peter, and then John would write 1st, 2nd, 3rd John, then you have the book of Jude, which is one chapter that talks about building up your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. And uh, then you have John, who also wrote the book of Revelation. It's called the Revelation of Jesus Christ. And it's where we find the Apostle Paul, uh, Jude, John on the Isle of Patmos. And he would say, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. And ladies and gentlemen, let me encourage you. Every day you live is the Lord's day, and you need to be in the spirit of the Lord. But the book of Revelation talks about the revelation of Jesus Christ and gives us much of what we know and study about the coming of the end of the age. There is a teaching that the Old Testament is not for us today. However, the Old Testament was the, all the early church had for a Bible. Consider this. Jesus told his disciples one day, he said, go search the scriptures. For they are they which testify of me. And ladies and gentlemen, much of our Judeo-Christian heritage and teaching is built upon the Old Testament. In fact, it's all built on the Old Testament. And, and when you start studying the scriptures, you can't just start the New Testament. You've got to start the Old Testament and work your way because the prophecies and the stories and everything lead us up to Christ. And so that's why as much of the epistles are sermons from the Old Testament text as well. If you would, just read 1 Corinthians 10, verse 1 through 11, and you'll see. The Bible is such an incredible book, ladies and gentlemen. It's relevant to any age, to any person, to any type, and any person. God can speak to them through his word. Thank you for being with us today as we talk about the breakdown of the scriptures and the 66 books that we call the Bible or the Holy Word of God. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, once again, I want to say... I thank you for your word. I ask you to help it to become more important to us than it ever has been in our lives, God, and that your word will become more clear, that your revelation and teaching will become more clear to us. I thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Thank you for being with me today. Come back tomorrow, and we're going to talk about seven dispensations. God bless you.